All right, guys, I'm set up here. I am ready to start polishing this 23 foot tug. I'll start on the top side and then work my way down to the hull on the dock side. Today we're going to be using that Griot's Garage Orbital Polisher with a microfiber pad using McGuire's flagship premium. Haha, <laughs> fooled ya. I'm actually going to start showing you the hull work first. Uh, as usual, just kind of laying down on my dock pad and trying to keep control of the boat so it's not swinging into the dock and or crushing my face. Hey, while I'm thinking about it, I just wanted to give a big... Thank you and shout out to all of you have, uh, who have subscribed to the channel. We actually hit our 100 subscribers mark. And uh, it really means a lot to me. So thanks again for uh, taking the time to subscribe. And especially those of you who are leaving questions and comments. Um, it's good to get some feedback from you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope that I can keep providing something that's of value to you. All right, and while I'm kind of just running through this video, I was noticing I've uh, sped up the speed to about six times. So if this looks like it's going really fast to you, that would be why. Uh, as far as speed goes, in addition to the sped up video, that Griot's Garage Orbital I use, I tend to run it somewhere between about a three and a five on the dial setting. It goes all the way up to six, but I found that if you use the six or even sometimes the five setting and you're buffing large areas, it will literally melt the glue right off of the backing of your pads. Uh, depending on the pad type you're using, I've found that the microfibers work really well and they um, dissipate or absorb some of that heat pretty well. So I can keep buffing for a long time. But even with that in mind, if I'm running at a five and a half or a six, it's going to chew up that pad. So keep your speed low enough to do the work, but high enough that it's not melting the glue off. Really the key points to this are use a squared off towel so that when you get down to the waterline, if this boat was near the waterline, when you do that bottom edge, you're able to control and know exactly where the bottom is so it doesn't drip down. You know, if you were doing something like this, right? There's no bottom edge. The other thing is when you're doing something like this, how many layers do you have there? One to who knows how many. Your fingers are going to press through those areas. And I don't know if this is correct, but the way I explained it is you're only getting pressure where your fingers actually are. If you've got a multiple folded towel, you've got the ability to put pressure on this whole area and get some good force to what you're trying to get off. Otherwise, you're just missing a bunch of it. Woohoo! It's really moving away. Nice finished close up just so you can see it's pretty much lint free, blemish free, and real good looking versus where I still got to take all that off. All right, okay, and then I was just uh, moving down the rest of the boat, getting all that polymer sealant off of those areas that I've already buffed. One thing you may notice is uh, one of these portholes, one I'm at right now, it's a rubber porthole, not the round one, but the rectangular one right there. 
and it's got like a rubber trim around it that is all white. That unfortunately was from whoever waxed this boat last. They got a bunch of wax into that. Um, to be honest, I don't even know how they did that. It's not on the same level as the fiberglass. So anyway, just so you're aware, we don't wax porous rubber or plastic. If it's like what's on the rub rail, it's more um, smooth and less porous. That can be done. In fact, on this one, I did do that. But anytime there's bumps in it or if it seems a little bit more uh, just kind of rough to the touch, typically those do not get waxed or polished. You can use, obviously, a product to dress those. But most products do not last long and they will tend to drip down. So just cleaning them and then using any kind of UV protection is probably your best bet. All right, well this probably goes without saying, but anytime there's any type of uh, hardware or any type of edge, you always wanna make sure to travel in the direction of those, whether you're buffing or wiping um, and really pushing up right against it so that one, when you're waxing, you get wax all the way to where the fiberglass ends and that piece is. And then two, when you're removing, just so you don't leave any product behind. Um, the, the last thing is once I wipe off, I always will look at it from one angle and then change my perspective, um, look at it from standing up maybe, or just go to the other side of the boat and look down at it from that angle. Um, different light and different angles is going to help you see all the product that's on the surface you're working and help you to make sure that you've gotten it all off. So just a lot of scrubbing and rubbing and I'm turning that towel, making sure that, again, I'm getting it all, and then I've left a nice sealed and protected finish to this fiberglass. This Ranger tug, I think, is a 2017. That means it's about two years old at the time of this filming. Uh, filming. Filming. Sometimes I get carried away with myself. Uh, and it was in relatively good shape. It was starting to develop a little bit of water spotting and maybe had just some very, very light oxidation when I got to it. But on this same dock and on multiple docks around here, there's tons of these Ranger tugs that are, let's say, between one and five years old. Several of them are already completely oxidized and just in really bad shape. In fact, I think I may have taken a picture of one, so if I did, I'll, I'll slip it in here at the end. So uh, basically, dark colored hulls, critical to maintain. Um, white color, of course, super important too, but anytime you have a dark colored hull or dark colored fiberglass, um, if you do not maintain it every six months to 12 months at a minimum, you're probably going to be in for a bad time uh, when you get around to it. So maintenance is always going to be easier, always less time consuming. Um, just always a good idea. Obviously, you know, these boats aren't cheap. You know that if you own one, uh, you're better off maintaining them and just spending the money despite it being hard to um, up front. Believe me, it's going to save you time, frustration, and a whole pile of money at the end. So anyway, that's my two cents worth. So a lot of times people ask me, well, how long does it take to do a boat? And of course, that's kind of a loaded question, right? It depends on the boat. It depends on the size, depends on the condition, depends on the weather, depends on how I'm feeling. No, just kidding. Um, so a lot of different things play into that, right? Um, but the main things being size, age, condition. Um, and so, you know, again, loaded question. This particular boat was one full day, one person, which was me. And, you know, 
I've been doing this for literally 26 years. So a lot of experience. I know what to do. I know what not to do. Um, you know, someone 22, could they do it in, the, in one day? Definitely. Um, they'd probably feel better at the end of the day than I did. But they'd also need to have the experience to know what to do and what not to do um, to do that timing-wise. So if you're motivated and you've got the tools, the products, and the ability to you know be out in the sun working all day, this boat, a 23-foot Ranger tug, was one whole day. <clears throat> Having said that... Um, you know, I just, I know the process, so enough said, I guess. All right, guys, got her turned around. Got some polymer down on the hull. About ready to finish this bad girl off. You know what I'm talking about. Probably got a couple more hours yet. But that's good, about to finish her up. All right, just finished up. Almost 8 o'clock or so. The sun's about to set. We're in our spring months, so it gets dark real late, which is nice. Got this bad boy done. Got all the smooth, waxed, and polished. All the non clean Ugh, can't even talk. I'm so tired. All the flooring done. All the stainless done. All the glass done. The engine cowl done. Anyway, thanks for checking it out. Appreciate you stopping by.